Hey guys, this is Mark here from pixelfiendtag.com and today we are going to be doing a review of the Nikkor 44mm 2.8 DX macro lens. Now this is a lens for Nikon DSLRs that I've been testing out recently so I thought why not give you guys a review, tell you my thoughts on it and show you some sample pictures along the way. Okay, so first up, as I mentioned, this is a macro lens. Now, if you don't know what a macro lens is, it's basically a lens that has a very short focusing distance. Now, this means you can get really close to something and still get it in focus. And this can be brilliant for things like um, little bugs and insects and flowers and getting things in really good detail. And a lot of people do like macro photography. So if um, you're into that, this is certainly a lens to look at. Next up, I'm going to speak about the depth of field. So this is a 2.8 lens. Now that does vary with your focusing distance, but the lowest it goes to is um, f stop 2.8. So that is certainly um, very impressive considering if you're coming from the kit lens, the 18 to 55, going down to 2.8, you're going to see a huge difference. And I would just like to point out, I am actually recording with it now. I'm standing fairly far away and I'm actually quite close to my background here. But you can see it is slightly out of focus and I should be nice and sharp. So that is because it is set. In fact, I'm looking at the screen, it is at aperture 2.8 right now. So I'm taking advantage of that low aperture. Now also another advantage apart from that shallow depth of field with low aperture is of course opening up wide will let tons of light in so you can increase your shutter speed and take down your ISO a bit if you move to that lower aperture which um, is certainly nice to have that kind of flexibility. Now um, another thing I'm going to speak about is the autofocus. So this is more of a budget end lens, it's not really professional grade. So you're not going to get the best autofocus, but for me it is certainly acceptable. You can change the range so that it only autofocuses halfway with one of the switches on the side. Um, so if you're not doing close-ups that'll be helpful. But I'll throw in a little piece of b-roll showing you the full time for it to autofocus. And for me, um, obviously it's not the best, but I did find that it was okay. Next up, uh, a handy thing on this lens is that the filter thread is the same as that on the 18-55 kit lens and other ones like the 50mm. Um, so if you have those lenses, it means you can use the same lens caps, you can use the same filters, so you can interchange things across lenses and you don't have to buy tons of new stuff. So again, another handy feature. And this does also come with a carrying case and a lens hood in the box, so that is very handy. Now another thing about the lens hood is it kind of covers up your... Um, you're kind of focusing so this is not an internal focusing lens so what that means is when you focus the lens gets bigger and smaller now this is not actually noticeable when you have the lens cap on um, and the lens cap will also give it a small amount of protection and of course um, its main purpose is to stop sun flares so um, it does its job for that I haven't really experienced any sun flares while using it so um, it certainly does seem to do its job now one of the main things about this lens is the fact it is a prime lens. Now if you don't know what a prime lens in is, it's basically a lens that cannot zoom. So this is fixed at 40mm. Now for me 40mm seems fine though sometimes I have found that I've had to back up because things have been kind of too zoomed in. But for things like videos like this, personally I think 40mm is fairly optimal for me. Um, in my kind of setup and I do certainly like that focal length. Now with a prime lens it means you're going to have less glass in there and less glass means you're going to have better picture quality. So if you're willing to give up the zoom function for slightly better features then prime lenses are certainly something that I would recommend looking into. I'm going to be building up my collection of prime lenses hopefully in the future. So of course look forward to videos coming on that when I finally get around to purchasing them. Finally, um, I'm going to do a bit of a comparison between this and the kit lens and then do an overview. So basically the kit lens which most people will have with their camera unless you have possibly a more extensive camera or you've decided to sell your kit lens. But um, personally I think this is one of the best choices you can get for a second lens. 
Now, some people are probably wondering why is this? Because your 18 to 55 covers this focal length anyway. Surely you could just put that to 40. But in my opinion, the picture quality is much better. I really do love having that depth of field. And the macro in this camera is really great. And I don't think I can really describe it too well. You can pretty much touch what you're taking a picture of with the lens and still be able to focus. So the macro capabilities of this lens um, are certainly the best I've tried. Though to be quite honest, I haven't tried many macro lenses. But um, I certainly love the macro capabilities. The picture quality is great. And as of course I said, that depth of field. Of course, if you don't actually want that depth of field, you can just put it up to a higher F number and get rid of it. But it does allow you the option to go down to that depth of field. And personally, I think having a prime lens alongside your kit lens is certainly going to be brilliant and I think this is a brilliant second lens for beginners um, people who are just getting into the DSLR world I think this is a brilliant lens so overall this lens for the price it delivers um, a very good lens and I am very happy with it obviously if you're a professional you're going to be slightly disappointed with this lens but for me and for most other beginner people who are just getting into the DSLR world this is a perfect lens if you're out and about taking pictures in nature and things like that this is going to be brilliant if you're taking YouTube videos I would also recommend this lens because I really like that photo focal length and when you're doing those close-in shots of things like products that shallow depth of field um, really really does improve the quality of your shots for both photo and video also, something I forgot to mention is it has a new switch on the side which has not been seen on the 18-55 kit lens. This is common on most lenses, but instead of just having manual or automatic, it has manual and manual slash automatic, which means it is autofocus, but you can override that with manual if you want, which for me, I think I just keep it in that because that means I have the choice between either auto or manual. One thing this lens is missing is VR. That doesn't really affect me. A lot of the time I'm shooting on tripods and if I'm not, I'll just put the shutter speed up a bit to get rid of any camera shake. Um, but overall, I'm happy with this lens. There are very few downsides to it. The focusing can be a bit slow, but um, I can easily cope with that. But most people do like to use manual focus, so that is likely not going to affect you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, a share, and why not subscribe to this channel for more content. If you've got any questions for me about this lens, or you just want to leave a comment, you can do that in the comment section below, or email me at the address in the description. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.